Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. This is part two of three of building your sustainable dream business. And I am Diana Lidstone, your marketing strategist. So here's the question for today. If you were anything like me, when I started my business, I had this dream that I could build a business that would pay me good money, but I wouldn't have to work my ass off. And that like today, I was able to go out this morning, go boating with my husband, and still the business was clicking along. So if you are watching, give me a high five, say hello in the comments. Uh, I can't wait to uh, share this with you. I'm going to share with you five tips for becoming the CEO of your business, of your dream business. And I know that for lots of you, your dream business doesn't look like your business looks like today. So let's get to her. As I said, say hello. I also want to say welcome, welcome to those people who have joined Shift, uh, your business, this group here, and who are registered for the free marketing workshop week that is coming up, right? Three, it's coming up. Uh, next week, we are going to do five days of free training. And why five days of free training? Because I believe that we have entered a new economy. And so the question is, we've all adapted to this new economy, but has your offer adapted to this new economy? Have you changed? Have you made it relevant for your clients? Do you know specifically what you are selling? How is it packaged and how is it positioned? I'm going to share all of that with you next week when you register for marketing uh, workshop week. So as I said, today is all about building your dream business and having that transition to become the CEO of your business. So yes, uh, on Tuesday, I shared with you my grow meter here, right? I shared with you the different stages of building a business. And we talked about being the glorified employee, how we are often here, we are in survival mode. And then, you know, we figure some things out, we get off this cash flow roller coaster and we become more of a manager and our income is more stable and you can see some figures along here then third we move up even more and we get into scaling our businesses and the ceo of our business i believe every entrepreneur every business owner should be thinking like the ceo of their business but if you are not there yet no worries because guess what we all start down here. I was there once too. So not to worry, not to worry. But keeping in mind the CEO and start thinking like the CEO is so, so important. It's so important because this is where you get the big vision for your business. And if you don't know where you are and if you don't know where you want to go, it's really hard to build a plan and to get traction. So are you here as a glorified employee? I know so many people were, and that's okay. That's all right. What I want to share with you is how do you get out of employee mode, right? It is possible, um, but you got to want to, as they say, you got to want it, right? So for some of you, you might want to get out of employee mode because Maybe you have children that uh, you want to spend more time with. For me, it's because my husband is retiring and I want to spend more time with him on the boat. And so how do I change my business so that it can really kind of run without me, so to speak? And I want to share five different tips for you about that. Okay, so let's get to her. Let's get to her. Um. I also, just before I get started, when I talked about this on Tuesday in part one, if you haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one. I was talking about earning not 5K a month, but 10K a month. And I just want to share with you why 10K a month. The thing is, by the time you pay taxes, by the time you pay expenses, by the time you pay 
a virtual assistant, any other part of your team, 10K a month whittles down to probably 6K a month. Then you have to pay yourself out of that. And so you need to know what your expenses are. It's not a lot of money. We think it is when we sort of think, oh, 10K a month. But when, you know, push comes to shove, it's not. So how do you start shifting yourself from the glorified employee up through manager and into CEO? Number one, tip number one, you got a pen, paper, is that you have to know where you want to go. You have to have a vision for what your business is going to look like. And I call that in my book, I call that your detailed dream. If you don't have a copy of my book, you can either go and buy it on Amazon or you can join us for Marketing Workshop Week where I will be giving away copies of it. So you need to know where you are going. You need to know what your business is going to look like. And this week I started working with a new private client and we went through a whole visualization for how her business might look in three to five years. She didn't have to know how to get there. She just needed to know what she wanted it to look like. Okay. So that is so important. And I see so many people omitting this part of their planning process. All right. Um, I still don't know who's watching. I know there's some people there, but put your name in the comments, please, so that I know that you are here. So today, hashtag CEO. That's the word for today. So you need to know the big picture. Number two is a skill that you need to learn. And there are new skills. I know you're down here and you're learning so many things, right? There's so much technology to learn. There's so much to learn about pricing. There's all kinds of things to learn. But as your business grows, you need to learn to delegate. It is one of the hardest things for entrepreneurs to learn. It is a skill. And I call it, we get into the syndrome I call the Lone Ranger syndrome. We think we need to do it all because nobody else can do it the same, the right way. And what that ends up doing is it ends up being exhausting. It ends up leading you to burnout. So I know your business is your baby, but it won't work for you if you don't learn how to delegate it can, it, it's not sustainable. Hey, Sylvie, wonderful. Thanks for stepping in. Thanks for sharing your name here. I look forward to uh, this. So stop being a control freak and learn how to delegate. That is number two. Number three, this is again, another skill that you have to learn. And it is learning about a CEO mindset, so a CEO mindset, put on your CEO hat, and learning that you need to invest in your business. Because what happens is when you don't invest in your business, when you don't take calculated risks, you end up on that hamster wheel. Sound familiar to anybody? Eh, I'm guessing, right? And I've tried it. I've tried doing everything myself. And when you look at all these people that are online and they are building these amazing online businesses, guess what? They have a whole freaking machine behind them. They have a team behind them. They're not doing their bookkeeping. They're not doing their social media. They're not creating their own graphics. They're not doing that sort of thing. They are hiring out. Now, they're hiring out and they're staying in their zone of genius. They're doing the thing that they do really well. And I know that the first thing that most entrepreneurs say, but Diana, I don't have the money to invest in a team. And that is making decisions from where you are. So if you say, I don't have the money, I don't have the clients, you're making decisions from the glorified employee point of view. 
You're not making decisions from either the manager or the CEO point of view. This is where you want to go. Then you have to start thinking like this. I'll give you a great example. Uh, my friend Robert uh, has an amazing business. It's been su supporting he and his family for many years. And I'm in a mastermind with Robert. And we, a couple of years ago, we said, Robert, you need an assistant. You, His zone of genius, he's a master salesperson and connector. He needed to do that. Not, you know, price the orders, not send out the orders, not confirm the contracts. He needed an assistant to do that. And he hemmed and he hawed and he hemmed and he hawed. And finally, we held his feet to the fire and we said, Robert, by the end of, I forget what month it was, I will say March, you need to hire an assistant. And so he did. And he struggled and struggled and struggled because he said, I feel committed to her that I'm out to make sure that I have enough work for her. And the story, I'll shorten the story. The story goes that since he hired her, he has doubled his business. If he had continued to make decisions from where he was, he never would have expanded his business. So make decisions from the point where you want to be in your business, not from where you are. Okay. And this can be kind of the chicken and the egg, right? You go, I'm only here, I don't have the clients, but I kind of need to make the decisions to move up. Which comes first? I'll tell you, it is making decisions from where you want to be. And if you don't start making those decisions from where you want to be, I guarantee it, you'll be in the same spot six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, okay? So that was number three. Now, number four, tip number four is focusing on CEO tasks. So I'm going to, and this starts with a CEO mindset. So I'm going to flip here. And there's basically five different kinds of basic tasks that we all do in our business. And I hope you can see this. Okay. And the tasks are, Admin and operations. We'll group those all together. Admin and operations. Excuse me. The second is what we call customer fulfillment. So customer fulfillment would be like, if I'm coaching you, that is customer fulfillment. We are actually doing what the customer is paying us to do. Okay. Then we have customer service. So customer service, that is, you know, how are people engaging with me? If people have questions, do they get their questions answered easily? Right, that's customer service. The fourth is what I call, and I group this together, business growth and development. So it's about growth, and development. So this is uh, about planning. This is about personal growth and development. What are you doing? You know, are you spending time having that big picture, those big picture items? Okay. Business growth and development. What are you doing for business growth and development? And last but not least, marketing and sales. So we have five different task areas. Now here's the mistake that I see so many entrepreneurs make. They stay focusing the majority of their time here and going this way. They spend the majority of their time doing admin and operations, billing, um, what else would you consider? Um, you know, maybe making your website better, uh, maybe uh, creating a Facebook page. All of that, those are admin. And then they focus on, they spend the, the second most of the time on customer fulfillment, 
but they spend the least amount of time on marketing and sales. They've got it backwards. Totally, totally backwards. If you don't have enough income in your business, if you don't have enough clients in your business to be where you want to be on the grow meter, you need to spend the majority of your time on marketing and sales and less of your time in the other direction, okay? Now, it's not exactly reverse, but it is starting with marketing and sales. It is starting with marketing and sales. It is doing business growth and development. Next would be customer fulfillment, then customer service, and then admin and ops. It's a little skewed. Okay, so it would be marketing and sales, business growth and development, customer fulfillment, customer service, and then last but not least, admin and ops. Do you know how much time I spend on admin and operations? Very, very, very little. I have a bookkeeper. I don't pay him. He just happens to be my husband. Uh, I have a VA. I have automated so that when somebody uh, is paying me multiple uh, months, it is automated. Systems become your friend. Systems become your friend. And last but not least, becoming a CEO and focusing on the tasks of the CEO that they should, there's one big thing that I want to share with you. And that is every week, having a CEO date with yourself. It's like a planning meeting. Every Monday morning, I have a CEO date with me. I'm the CEO. And what do I do in that? I review what my week is going to be. I review my marketing plan. I review what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done, what can I do. I wear my CEO hat and I do big picture planning, big picture planning. And when we do this type of thing, then we are moving our business forward. Then we are moving our business forward. Then we have time. Ah, good one, Sylvie. Good one. So that was number four, focus on CEO tasks. Marketing and sales are first. Marketing and sales. If you don't have enough clients, if you don't have um, enough income, at least 80% of your time should be on marketing and sales. 80% of your time. Write that down. The other thing is, how many sales conversations do you have scheduled in your agenda? For next week how many having sales conversations scheduled in your agenda shows me that you're moving your business forward okay so number five number five thing that you can move your business forward is you have to decide to choose something different if you want different results duh she says right I think it's Albert Einstein that said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? If you're stuck in your business and you feel like you're on a hamster wheel and you're not earning what you want, then you have to choose something different. So choose, come to Marketing Workshop Week. I'm going to put the, um, hold on, I'm going to put the link here for you. There we are. Come to Marketing Workshop Week. We are going to, I'm going to help you create a new offer that is relevant for today's new economy. Every one of us have had to adapt. How have you adapted and made your offering relevant for today? It's a new economy. Totally new. Sylvie, 
you have um, cycling. The new economy is that people are not going to go back to gyms. They're hesitant. They don't want to do it. How can you position your offering so that they want to join up and work with you virtually online? Right? So if you don't know what to choose to be something different, then we can help you do that. That's my job. Okay? You need to get different results. If you keep spinning your wheels, right? It's not so good. So let me just quickly review these um, that I shared with you, these tips on becoming a CEO. And uh, next Tuesday, we're going to do part three. And part three is going to be the six, um, six things that you must do to be successful as a business owner. And I'm going to talk specifically about tasks for each stage of business growth. Okay, so summarize today, we talked about having a vision for your business. If you go to my book, there are some download resources, a detailed dream, and that will get you started. Number two, learn how to delegate and stop being a freaking control freak, right? You can't do it all yourself. Number three, stop being a cheap ass and invest in the right things in your business, okay? In the right things so that you stay in your zone of genius. Number four was focus on CEO tasks. Make sure that marketing and sales take the majority of your time, not admin and ops or customer service. Have a CEO date with yourself every week. And number five is choose something different. Choose something different so that you get different results. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's part two, becoming the CEO of your dream business. You want a dream business. You want a business that can pay you well and still allow you to have a life out there whether it is spending time with your kids, whether it is out on the boat like I was this morning, whatever it happens to be, you get to decide. But you've got to be really clear about what it is. Again, thanks for watching. Take care. Hashtag replay. Bye for now.